Okay, off we go again. Um, I got a text from Damon today. I think about chapter four. Let me check my little deal here. Um, but in general, I'm stuck on the first question of chapter seven. So we'll go to chapter seven and put that up. Uh, six, seven. Oh, before I go there, I opened up everything. Uh, the exams are up, etc. These are extra. Ignore them. Um, but that's what I see. So you can finish up. Now, the um, the presentation, not presentation, the comprehensive problem is in accounting principles one, and you can look here and go in assignments. The assignments tab. Ethan was asking about this today as well. Um, so it's it's not there. It is right there. So if you click on that, uh, this is what I see. Obviously, not what you see. But if you click on it, let's go. This is the Darth of bandwidth up here. But here it is, the comprehensive problem, and here's some instructions. As I said, it's worth 250 points, work together. Um, I know that's a damn problem, but open up a Zoom page. Um, if you're having trouble with it, check with me, and I'll put up check figures for you. You, you know, I, I mean, I can glance at it and know whether your figures are right. Uh, so, it takes about two seconds for me to, you know, look at your stuff. It's just a comprehensive problem. You did it in homework in chapter three. I, I always like my first year students to do it on Excel. I'm dragging it over. Um, and I gave a presentation on it, but some of you weren't in class, as is the case. You know, it's college. I don't care whether you're in class. Um, now you're not in class. <laughs> so... Jackie Fernandez uh, formed a corporation, and here's all the things that Jackie did. Uh, here's here's her um, her chart of accounts. You know, this is just like you 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 would set up in QuickBooks when you move on to that, which a lot of you might. Uh, um, we have a course in QuickBooks at CMC that I think is a good course to take. Uh, you know, I'm knee deep in it, uh, working at my CPA job. And then it gives you a general journal and um, worksheet by worksheet. You're going to go through the accounting cycle. So I'm not going to say anything more about that. Some of you are knee deep in it, which is good. Um, anyway, uh, I'm, I'm uh, having a great time because I get to think and write and do. I've always wanted to be a chin scratcher, you know, and, and that's what I get to do these days. So. Um, before I get into this, I, I just want to mention that uh, a lot of what you're seeing in the stock market is due to the fact that accounting standards suck. They're just terrible. And there's a lot of phony companies out there. Uh, the airlines should go out of business. Um, there's a number, you know, you know my, my deal with Amazon being a Ponzi scheme. Well, you know, I'm not just kidding around. And, and, uh, um, I'm very serious about this. Um, there, there's an amazing lack of dishonesty in in um, what we're doing in vis-a-vis uh, -vis the government and and uh, business and their relationships. So um, pay attention to what's going on. My ultimately, I, I think I've said this before. When you print money, ultimately the value of that money will, will go down. That's what's called inflation, and that's going to be a real problem for the dollar going forward. Um, on the other hand, I'm a very hopeful guy, so I, I see these situations, especially the, the one that we're in, I, I look at it as a, a time for careful reflection, and I, and I hope as business students, you're sort of at the epicenter of learning what it is that's going on. So um, pay attention. Pay attention. Open your eyes. Okay. So that's my little diatribe. Um, I think the market's got a long way to go down. I think this recession will be deep. Um, and it should be because there's a lot of phony crap going on. Now, Chapter 7, Homework. 
you can hear my wife in the background, but don't worry about it. <laughs> she, you see, we've got four students here at Chapter 7, so, you know, a lot of people have, have oh, no, there's some that submitted, too, but um, people have a ways to go here. Make sure you get there. I'm looking back at Damon's message. Chapter 7, and first question, well, I'm going to go through all of them so that I put them up for you. And, and I'll do this for any of these chapters you want me to. Uh, I may go back to chapter 4 and put it up. I know Ethan was having trouble, but those of you who have gone through chapter 4 know that it's something silly in, uh, in, in this, those big giant spreadsheets. You know, if you just put the date wrong or something like that. So here's number 1, chapter 7, we're talking about... Um, cash and credit sales, AR, and doubtful accounts. So uh, prepare the adjusting entries to record bad debts under each separate assumption. Bad debts are estimated 3%, 2%, and aging analysis 6%. And here's how it works out and, and the explanation <laughs> is down here. And at Damon, of course, Make sure that you don't have a rounding error. As you can see here, I also have <coughs> a cough, and I was just at the doctor today. I, I usually have a seasonal cough like this because of my uh, autoimmune disease, and uh, now I've been tested for the disease, so we'll see how that goes. Um, neither here nor there. Here's how this works. 3% of credit sales, so you get the um, the total sales, 3, 9, whatever it was here, 3, 9, 5, 9 was your credit sales, and you take 3%, 0.03, you got to know how to do that, it gives you 118,770 for bad debts, okay, so pretty straightforward, here's number two, uh, show how AR and allowance for doubtful accounts appear on, on the balance sheet. Remember, balance sheet is a snapshot. So accounts receivable, of course, are, are um, if assets equals liabilities and owner's equity, plus owner's equity. On our balance sheet, at the snapshot at December 31st, they, they would be on the left-hand side under assets. So accounts receivable are, are short-term assets, and, and you would see them in, in a ratio like uh, debt to equity, right? Yeah, um, or the acid test or, or um, acid test ratio or quick ratio. So AR uh, here is 11.99577, uh, less that allowance for doubtful accounts, you know, right? So we, we reduce the asset to be realistic about how much the asset is really worth. What are we going to get from these receivables? Right? What are we actually going to be able to collect? We know that some people are going to stiff us. Right? And what is the percentage? And, and companies make estimates. Um, in this case, it was 6% or $71,975. That's pretty hefty right there. So. They, they may have to re-examine their credit terms if, as a company and say, well, if we give everybody 90 days, we, we have more um, allowance for doubtful accounts and therefore uh, more of a write-off. You know, a, a, you don't want to write off things. You, you want to be able to collect on everything you sell. I mean, that's the point of being in business. Okay, so that's questions one and two. Let's go three and four, just so for if anybody has questions on them. Here they are. AR. Uh, this one is a um, unadjusted credit balance of 15000 This one's tricky because you have to back into uh, the numbers a little bit. But here, here they are. Allowance for doubtful account, unadjusted credit balance of 50000 Jordan prepares a schedule like this. Um, this is what they expect. Where did they get this? They made it up. They, this is what, after years of figuring out what they can, can collect, 
uh, between 1 and 30 days, it turns out only 1.95% is not going to be collected at 1 to 30 days. But as the days get longer, it, it, I, we call that aging accounts receivable, aging AR. If, if any of you are bookkeepers, you've seen that. Um, when you get up into over 90 days, 67% of your, of your accounts receivable aren't going to come in. Those people are gone. That's why it's absolutely ridiculous to give people um, time to not pay their mortgage. They, they won't go back to paying it. This is very, it's, we know this. Um, very few people will go back to paying it if, if, they, if they get used to not paying it. Uh, that's a problem. Okay, AR, um, so here's how it plays out. You know, you just had to fill in the blanks and get your numbers. No further explanation necessary. And then in, in uh, number four, what's the adjusting entry? Right, the difference between the bad debts expense and the allowance for doubtful account. And here's, here's the explanation down here on, on how that was derived. Right, we had this $15,000 credit, then we had an additional uh, $39,917 credit um, balance. So we subtract those and, and get that $24,000. Okay. Simple enough. These, these things are important. You know, you start to estimate. Even if you have a small business, you start to estimate how, many, how much you can um, collect. You can't, if you're a plumber or or uh, even have a small business, you've got to figure out what you're going to collect if, if you extend credit. Now, this one's a biggie. Uh, 360 days in a year, that's banking, right? Um, 14,660-day note. <laughs> these, these are, look at all of these. Year one, year two, year, year three, and then it gives you these requirements. This is how it ends up. And I'll just go through them one by one. Thankfully, you can stop the tape on YouTube and sort of get a sense of what happened here. Uh, there's 1B. There is 1C. Don't round. Intermediate calculations. Take that seriously or you'll screw yourself up. 1D. Won't move. There it is. This is the general journal for everything that happened here, right? Big old problem. I know it's a pain in the ass, but I pledge the pledge of receivables is shown in the financial statement footnotes. That'll become important next year when you take 122. Um, you start to look at 10Ks and, and see what's in the footnotes of, of these 10Ks. Um, and here's here's the explanation for you um, on some of these calculations. And you know, you can go back and forth and uh, look at your own calculations to see what went on. Okay, that's chapter seven homework. I'm gonna put that up real quick uh, so that Damon maybe can see it tonight. I know it's nine o'clock, but um, be that as it may. So. I think that's all I have and I will put up another lecture and you're almost done. Now remember that out of 12 chapters, you drop the two lowest scores. So, you know, I, please do chapter 11 and 12 or you're not going to be ready for next semester. They're important chapters. Um, but, but nonetheless, uh, if your strategy is to, to um, dog it, uh, don't make sure you do the exams. They're worth a hundred bucks, a hundred points each, and the final uh, project is worth two fifty. That's six hundred fifty. That's almost half of the course. So you know, be careful. Uh, use your head and look at the syllabus so that you get you you maximize your um, effectiveness if if your time is constrained, right? Okay, I will talk to you soon. I hope you all are doing well. And...